All right, today we're gonna to take a look at the situation where we have a 50 gram bouncy ball, which is traveling at 20 meters per second towards a wall. And once the ball strikes the wall, it's going to bounce back at 15 meters per second. And in this problem, we're gonna solve for two things. The first being the impulse by the wall on the ball. And the second being the force between the ball and the wall as they collide. Now this problem could be solved using kinematics and Newton's second law, but instead what I want to use is linear momentum. Now you'll remember, linear momentum is given by, where P is equal to mv, where m is the mass and v is the velocity. So what we're going to do is relate the initial and final momenta of the ball to the change in momentum of the ball as it's in contact with the wall. So we have the initial momentum plus the change in momentum is the final momentum. And this change in momentum is what we call impulse. And that's the first thing I want to solve for in this problem. So in order to solve for the change in momentum, we need to work out these other two terms. Our initial momentum is given by 0 0.05, the mass of the ball in kilograms, multiplied by the initial velocity of the ball, that's 20 meters per second. That gives us one kilogram meters per second of initial momentum. And for our final momentum, we still have 0 0.05 kilograms of mass, but now there's 15 meters per second for the final velocity. And we have to be careful because the velocity in this case is to the left. That means if we're saying to the right is positive, this 15 meters per second is gonna be negative. Now it leaves us with negative 0.75 kilogram meters per second. So plugging these values into our equation for momentum, we'll get a change in momentum or an impulse of negative 1.75 kilogram meters per second. Now the thing about impulse is that it can be shown with units of kilogram meters per second, but more often you'll see it written as Newton seconds. Remember, a Newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. So if we were to multiply a Newton by a second, we get a Newton second is actually the same as a kilogram meter per second. So regardless of how you show the units, they mean the same thing. The impulse is negative 1.75. And it's in looking at impulse as a Newton second or a force multiplied by a time, which allows us to solve for this force between the ball and the wall during this collision. You see, impulse can be given by the equation force multiplied by time. So if we want to solve for the total force, we simply need to know the change in momentum or the impulse, which we already solved for, and the elapsed time for this collision. And we find the force is negative 175 newtons. Realize this force is negative because as the ball collides with the wall, the force by the wall on the ball is to the left. That is to say it's in the negative direction. So this is how we solve for both the impulse and the force on a ball as it collides with a wall. I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.